Hello everyone. Last night I had a really good time at Kev's um, one year memorial. It was pretty good. I met a load of guys that were followers on my channel. I apologise for my behaviour and crap videos, but it, it yeah, it was pretty good. Um, so the, the COVID crap has uh, spread around and it looks like we're going to get punished again. Um, I just got to Hua Hin today. This morning I went to one of Thailand's largest fabric factories and we had a look at fabric. It wasn't for me, but a guy I'm partnering with on um, on the fight gear, he, he's doing other stuff and we went and look, looked at a load of fabric and it was quite eye-opening really. I didn't realize there's that many types of fabric and that many types of weight and textures and pros and cons, you know. I, I was asked, they asked my opinion a few times, but it's just futile. I, I have no idea what this is. Maybe it's polyester, I don't know. But one thing I've got to learn about with the fight gear and all of the all of the clothes is I've got to try and innovate and try to use different things because when I speak to different suppliers, they say, well, don't, well this T-shirt's no good, my T-shirt's better, and you end up in a shouting match. Um, and then we went to a bag factory today where the guy manufactures bag and I brought a water bag for the gym and I brought like a, a it's like a little speedball, double-ended one. And um, you have a you have a cord and, and it goes between the ring as well. So for a bit of practicing with kicking and punching. Um, <clears throat> to, today, it looks like tomorrow, um, the bars are gonna be closed for two weeks. We got to Hua Hin and my friend was looking forward to going out to the bars. I, I was going to stay in the room and do some work. I've got loads of emails to check and stuff. And it looks like I've got to go back to Pattaya in the morning, back to closed bars. Um, one of the things I haven't, I don't speak about, about Rona because I, I just get bored of it all and I just think it's a load of nonsense and I, I'm not conspiracy theorist. I'm not any of these guys I just think that everyone should just get on with their lives and just you know just ignore it and I don't I don't want to get into arguments I probably should be talking about it now but you know it's a, it's a price we have to pay for the stupidity of the whole madness and just the crap that's going on luckily for us <clears throat> we can do live streaming so there's a lot of businesses out there that have to close and they, they get no money but we're going to continue live streaming tomorrow. We, <clears throat> what people don't realise is that business owners don't get a warning. We're not told tonight that we're going to get closed tomorrow. Sometimes we get letters from police or city hall one hour before saying you've got to close. And it's like, how can we plan our lives? People keep saying to me, what's your future plans? I don't know what my future plans is because <clears throat> I was getting all excited because our PayPal's were like blocked for six months and the money's going to start coming through soon. The website's doing okay. People said the town was picking up. I don't, I'm not sure if I agree with that. And then all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, you got to close two weeks again. <clears throat> all of the new girls come in, they get put off. Um, a lot of people's parents, <clears throat> a lot of girls' parents want them to go home. We get girls that they ain't getting laid. We get girls that can't practice English. We can't train managers because there's no customers. When the bars are closed, we have security around because it's still a safety issue. Girls get locked up, girls fight, <clears throat> things get mental. So we have um, security running up and down the soy. Well, the managers will be around looking after things and we're just gonna have to get on with it. So we're gonna be back down to just live streaming only. And last time I said that when it, this isn't gonna happen again and then it just keeps on happening. And there's a lot of bar owners out there that slagged us off for live streaming and just continue to attack us and they can't do it now because they've, they've took it too far and they don't want to embarrass themselves. This is a time when they're all paying. I never wanted to do live streaming. I did this to save our company. I had to make that decision one day. It wasn't my idea. I don't want credit or I don't want credit for that. There was other bars doing it. But I'm the one who said, look, we're going to have to take the abuse. We're going to have to save our asses, save our company and do live streaming. So when, they, when they're going to close us tomorrow, probably, we're just going to turn it off again. We're just going to close the doors and have live streaming on all the time. And that's, that's it for the next two weeks. 
Once things get back to normal, I can start planning ahead. We're, we're just about to open two more bars because we've got 15 bars open, we've got 10 closed and we've got a few to renovate because I've been busy. And we've, we've just gone to, oh, okay, we're just about to open two bars and then it's like, oh, it's, it's at 15 again. And we've just been running some really heavy recruitment adverts and recru uh, for, for um, cashiers and for the ladies. And the thing is with these recruitment adverts, you know, I'll, I'll be spending like six six hundred dollars a day sometimes or three hundred dollars a day, and it's it's very very tough to get new staff in a time like this. And when the doors are closed, it's even more impossible. So we're we're trying to recruit, trying to go against the grain of what everyone believes in, you know, all the panic and hysteria, and at the same time, we're saying, yeah, we'll come down to this building, you'll get locked up all day. And you're going to have to be on YouTube, which they assume their parents are going to see. And then, oh yeah, by the way, you're not going to get laid for two weeks. You're not going to uh, speak English, and you're going to sit in that room. Some of our girls are moaning; they're getting they're getting horny because they're they're not getting any guys seeing them. We get girls that you know still haven't learned English. We get girls losing their confidence in the first few days because they just say, you know, there's no customer around; it's boring. And then we're asking girls to dance, you know, on on YouTube, which is the new TV. And it's like, I'm not going on YouTube. My dad watches YouTube. Yeah, well, your dad's not going to be watching um, our live streams because it's it's in English for starters. And, you know, I'm sure he would watch it if, if he could find it. But I don't think he's going to watch it because he won't be able to find it. So um, I'm, just in, I'm just here in Hua Hin now. I've, I've got some more stuff for the gym. Tomorrow I'm gonna to put the um, canvas in and I'm gonna get the water um, bag up. The likelihood that the gyms and saunas will close in a few days. I'm just gonna focus on the website, focus on what I'm doing. Um, it's, it's Songkran for a week and I'm gonna go away from with my kids. I've got some more videos here that I might do. It's, it's now nine o'clock, I think. And uh, my friend's outside drinking at a massage place because there's nowhere else for him to go. So, um, yeah, it's quite funny today. Everyone was drinking, drinking in the factory. The bosses everywhere were drinking. And then <laughs> I kind of feel like I'm missing out sometimes in business deals because everyone's getting drunk and getting that rapport. And that's the problem. A few people said to me, oh, can't you have a beer tonight? I'm like, no, I can't. You know, I'm... It's, it's about business for me and I, I do like to relax and hang out, but it's just nothing for me, you know, sat in the bar with the music on loud and and not drinking. I've got a video, I've got um, an article here that I wrote about 10 reasons why introverts make the best um, entrepreneurs. Also, um, I put three or four more ideas down today. A few people keep asking me to do my retired celebrity ideas and I'm gonna try and write it down so it's funny, because if I don't write it down, then I might forget how I how I um, speak about it. But like, some, I think someone got confused. It's not about celebrities coming to Pattaya. It's about guys that think they're celebrities. And I thought maybe about doing the different types of guys that feel they're celebrities. And then see if I can do the different types of um, girls or you know the way they, the way they act when they come. Um, I'm going to have to think about that. When I wrote that Soy 6 profiling, I had, um, I, w I, was say I was in the bars a lot, and one thing about me is I'm constantly observing people, and I think that's why I do well in, um, in training people, and I, and I can see people's um, problems, and I, I can also see people that I need to avoid very easy, especially now more than ever. <clears throat> I've also got a video about 10 things to remember to keep your brain uh, wired right. I, I could probably think of a better title than that. But um, I've got stuff that I try and write down to remember, like I'm bad at some things. You know, like if you go out and meet people, they don't want to hear about you moaning and stuff. So you can, you can actually do a little checklist for when you actually um, wake up in the morning, like one, need to spend more time in our own presence that's we're living in our present and 99% of the time I'm thinking about two three years ahead but that's how you win financially I'm always saying like I'm gonna win um, and I'm gonna beat everyone because I'm the one 
who sacrifice in today, next week to, to get further. And then sometimes I have to remind myself, I need a balance. I need to stop for an hour and do something I enjoy. And I need to, you know, live in the moment and just stop everything, turn everything off and just spend time with my family. People have been telling me to do this for years, but I find it very, very painful to just pause and I feel like I'm missing out. I feel like I've, I've got things to do. I've been sat here for an hour, checking all my emails, going for everything, paid um, for my advertising at, at the flight, fight circus in Bouquet in three days. That's the first event that I'm sponsoring and it's called Fight Circus. Um, have a look at that. They've got some big sponsors and a few guys said to me, yeah, but it's, you know, it, f f people fighting in telephone boxes and dwarfs fighting ladyboys and all these things it isn't serious. They've got some serious stuff there and it's a bit of fun, it's entertainment and, and it's to a US crowd. I don't have a, my website fu functional yet, so I didn't want to go full out, full out advertising because no one can order my stuff. Um, another one on that list, we can make changes and make improvements just as much as everyone else can. A lot of people um, don't realize that they can change their life instantly. And that's one of the things I want to say with my videos. All you have to do is take massive action right now there's always something annoying us, like, you know, whether it's a bad habit or whether it's we haven't tied our room. Sometimes it's good just to say, right, F it. We need to just take massive action now, destroy something or just, you know, just completely like stop everything you're doing, spend the next two days cleaning something. And I've said that to a people, to, to a few people. There was one guy and he was constantly like getting in my business and he was constantly like, um, saying stuff about me and I message him and I says have a look at your kitchen why don't you give it a clean and he's like what do you mean I said well you're online all day attacking me what does your kitchen look like what does your room like I said go clean it and then get your life in order and he won't be online chatting shit to me and it was really funny he messaged me and he goes Brian I did that I, I cleaned my kitchen now and I loved it and I was just like yeah but this this is actually what Jordan Peterson says he says, don't criticize anyone until you've like, cleaned your room. Because if you look at my room sometimes, you'll see the state of my mind and you'll see how, how well or how badly I'm doing that time. If the room is completely cluttered, then I'm basically deep in um, work and I'm suffocating sometimes. Like I've got a few jobs to do now and then I just get hammered with more stuff and then I start drowning. Um, Action is all that matters most of the time. I see a lot of people talking theories and planning, but I don't see them taking action. I've seen some right, um, uh, let's say, guys that aren't so clever, but they just take action. And it doesn't matter if they're stupid or they get it wrong, they just keep on taking action and they, and they keep on doing it. And eventually they just, they, just, they just win. All the smart guys are saying, no, I shouldn't do this because of... You know, I'm probably going to fail. I need to do more research and I've got to get this right. And then it's the guy that, you know, the, the guy with just does things. It's like, right, well, I'm just going to do it anyway. And then I'm going to do it again. And then and then he's the one that wins. So it's always the smart guys that end up procrastinating. Uh, failure is a big beginning. A lot of guys say to me that failure, um, you know, oh yeah, you, your um, massage place failed, your restaurant failed. Yeah, well, that was a lesson to not to, not to do it again. You know, that wasn't a lesson to learn from next time. It was like, no, I'm not doing that again. But of course, we we learn something in every process, and I've I've spoken about about this loads of times. People, the more more times you fail, the easier you're going to get to actually, you know, getting somewhere. So. Failure is something to wear on the shirt and failure is something to be proud of. And as long as if you're not failing at the same things, because that's just pretty dumb. And that is, a, that is a little embarrassing. I wouldn't tell anyone about that. I certainly don't. If you really want to do something, do it. Um, yeah, well, plan it, because quite often things are available if you plan ahead. Ask around. One thing that people say to me is that I don't have access to certain resources like you and then I don't get things for free. I don't get this. I don't get that. I'm not saying I get things for free. I'm just trying to think of examples. And I say to people, you've got to ask. Like, 
if you go in a factory, oh, well, I would really love a machine like that. Do you know where I can get one cheap? Oh, yeah, you can have mine. I was in a place earlier and I said to the guy, would you ever sell your factory? And he's like, yeah, do you want to buy it? Like, let's talk. And it's just kind of, you've got to just keep asking continuously. You, and you've got to plan it. And if you show people your plans and show people your spirit, some people will just back you for that. I've seen guys, you know, with crap plans, but they're, they're very excited and you can see how enthusiastic they are. And, and I know enthusiasm, enthusiasm and effort will will go past any plans. Sorry about my speech, I'm slurring again because I haven't drank enough water today. We've been traveling all day. Um, embrace negative things. If you were stuck in a lift, enjoy the moment. This is one of my other big faults is that uh, I'll start moaning about things like, oh, I haven't eaten today. I haven't drank water today. Or maybe just shut the F up and just enjoy your um, moment and you know it's like at the moment I'm sat in here you know fair enough I'm doing a video but I'm checking my emails in a minute I, I haven't got a real reason to be here because the the work the rest of the work's not that important so I need to live in the moment and go out there and see my friend out there because they're getting drunk and having a good time it's, it's definitely not my thing but I love the guy and the other guy has a factory and um I need to love him too because he's important to me now. Get used to getting rejected. Ask more people, get more rejections, get used to it. But there's a classic story of a guy who knocks on the door and says, do you want some windows, sir? And the guy goes, no, you can F off. And he goes, well, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And the guy says, I'll just tell you to F off. Why are you still here? Why are you happy? He said, because one person out of every hundred tells me to F off. I mean, buys from me, and you're the 99th guy, and so the next guy is going to be the, the guy that buys off me. So I always look at rejection like that. You know, if you're just if you're getting rejected by um, prostitutes, then obviously obviously you should have a word with yourself. But if you're getting rejected um, at business levels, it, it, it doesn't mean that your product or your service is bad. But what it does mean is that you um, you probably need to approach someone differently. Rather than cold calling and emailing, what I try to do in Thailand is I try to go through people to people because if I just message someone say, hey mate, you fancy meeting up, he'll just say, who are you, you weirdo, like go away. But what I do is I speak to a guy that knows a guy and then the guy introduced me, says, this is Brian, he does business, he, he's, not, he's not messing around, he, he's got the cash, if he says something, he's going to do it. And then boom, the door opens. And one thing I've learned about living in Thailand for a long time is that there's, there's one person away from knowing someone. Every time I meet someone new in Thailand in the business scene in Bangkok or Pattaya, we know at least three, four people that, you know, and we, we know people well. And this happens time and time again. And, and this is the business um, um, circle and maybe other circles that I'm not in, that I'm in. I'm not talking about you know, the bowling alley circles, but even though, even those like sort of circles, you kind of like guys know each other because like maybe some guys go to the expat clubs. Anyway, I'm going to talk about the circles the other day. I'm going to try and identify different social circles in Bataya and then show how people can, um, you know, go from one to the other. Maybe they can think of a marketing strategy to go and make sure they're in every single circle in Bataya. And, and how circles make people think that they're famous. There's loads of guys saying to me, they're like, do you know who I am? And I'm like, well, not really, but I guess you're gonna tell me. And then, and then they say, well, I have a bar. And I'm like, well, well, that's nice, isn't it? You know. And then it's kind of like, I, I'm the important guy because I've got a, a Facebook group. And then after a few years, the guys kind of like, you know, their egos explode and they start attacking people and they start looking at guys like me and saying, I, I'm the boss now and you need to like back off. Not that I do anything, but they just see me as a threat. You know, like if you're in your hometown and you try to be the hardest guy, then you're going to get all the other hardest guys to try and come and fight you. But when you're in town like me and you're trying to position yourself as some sort of authority or some sort of person that is there to um, you know, do business with, to invest in, to come for, for ideas and the sort of person I am. And some guys get intimidated like by, intimidated 
by that. So what they do is when they get a 10% of a bar or 20% of that bar, their ego goes up and then it's like, boom, let's start showing Brian who's boss. And I just say, whatever, doesn't matter. I've been here for 14 years now and I see people come and go. And some people say to me, oh, you know, what are you going to do about that guy? I say, he'll be gone in a year or two. It doesn't matter. Like, what are you going to do about that guy? Well, that guy's attacking me. How do you think everyone else feels around him? What about people that want to invest with him? I've got one rule in Bataya, or well, I've got several rules in Bataya, and one of them is if I see someone mouthing off online or attacking people, I'll just say, stay away from them. If I see a business owner hanging around with another business owner that is absolute, is, is a shitster and can't control themselves, you know, th there was a guy yesterday that posted something online. It, it was a national one. It wasn't any of these um, guys locally. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> all these important business owners are contacting me saying, you hear, you seen what this guy's put online? And I'm like, yeah, I know, it's disappointing. But, you know, maybe people won't do business with that guy anymore because no one likes, say, um, a loose cannon. If you notice something about me, even though I'm digging at a few people because, you know, I don't want to be a bad guy, but I want people to learn and I want to entertain people, I'm not actually naming people, I'm not actually giving clues, I'm not, you know, going on a rant, so I'm not, I, I actually want to help people, and if, if some guys have problems with the way they deal with people, then maybe, maybe they can look for some advice somewhere. Anyway, um, yeah, you're very, very close to success. If you get a piece of pen and paper, and you, you can actually write down, there's always one or two or three uh, steps from success and that could be me saying to my mate look I don't want to um, sell my own product you send it out to the um, gym in Australia you do business with they can sell it there I'll send it to Canada I'll send it to England everyone can order from these guys I'll put it on Amazon job done I'm going to get less money but I, you know I'll be successful and then I'll focus on the sponsoring and the events I've, I'm actually talking to a guy about doing events in my gym and it'll be for VIP customers. And then we'll get a couple of fighters in, maybe get 10, 20 uh, foreigners in. It's gonna cost 22,000 baht, plus the guy organizing has gotta make a little bit of money, plus the fighters have to make a little bit of money. And then maybe, I've got, maybe I'll have a group of lads that wanna come in one day and we'll just do that because that'd be a good promotion for, um, for my brand, having the odd event here and there. I've just read this list out, 10 things to remember to keep your brain wired. And, um, and the second one was, finding good relationships is easier than you think. Always choose your friends. Look for people opposed to letting friends find you. As an introvert, someone quiet, I tend to get guys um, coming to me first, but you should always choose your friends in Bataya. Never let guys choose you. Every single time I've had one of those toe rags try to um, you know, scam me, and none of them have won, by the way, but they did cause um, cause me some damage. They've always chosen me, They're, they've always come to me, but, you know, I am like a YouTuber now, so everyone is gonna come to me first, but it depends, it depends on what type of guy they are. Oh, uh, yesterday, there was a guy who lives in Hua Hin, he came to me, he, watched, he watches my channel, and he wants to know um, any business ideas. I'm actually going to phone him in a few days and just try to brainstorm with him. But I really, really, I struggle to think of stuff um, for people. It depends on your town. Look in batsold.com, check things and just see what you want to do. Like that guy looks like he's been working out. I said, maybe look at a gym. A gym's probably a bad idea in Hua Hin, I don't know. I think a gym is a bad idea in Bataya. There's a couple of guys that will disagree because you always got the winners. Bangkok um, gyms seem to do very well. I'm not sure about who we're in. Maybe there's a niche somewhere. You really need to know the town. I think you need to speak to local business owners about stuff like that. And then I think you need to write down your objectives. Are you doing this for income? Are you doing this to express yourself? Are you doing it for fun? You know, or, or do you just need cash? So how much cash do you need? Do you need a little bit of cash? Well, maybe you can have a little lower business. If you need a lot of cash, then maybe you're gonna have to start a bigger one, which is more risk. So if you're gonna contact me and ask me for business ideas, that's a very tough thing for me to do. I'm not a magician. I can give you advice and contacts for certain things and I, can, and I can give you directions, but just asking me straight up, 
what business you should do, or maybe buy a bar because that that's the easiest thing for foreigners to do, and it and it's probably the only thing that seems to last a long time. I hope uh, some guys listen to this video, and I'm not sure what to do about the title now because it was a complete tangent. But I enjoyed myself, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for listening. See you later. Bye.